Welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe. Ugh, into the universe of Chinese. Um, okay. Apparently not very uh, loosened this morning. Okay, so here we're talking about uh, Chinese, my native language um, in English. And if it's first time, I hope uh, you would enjoy the show. And if a long timer, I uh, congratulate your um, tenacity in doing one word a day. It's quite a commitment, especially yesterday. I did it pretty worthy. Simply means uh, a few. Um, in the in this context, it's a military combat. So a few is very likely, uh, very less likely to come back to defend themselves against or fight with the crowd, like a more uh, body. Um, because yeah, I guess in, in the ancient times, especially um, the head counts in the military matters a lot. But in throughout the history, there are cases of this case situation, even if you're outnumbered, if the, um, the leader of the military um, knows so well, and they could maneuver to uh, with victory. So what do you do? Okay, today we continue with Zhong. Zhong, yesterday we talked about this human figure repeated three times, and they are all kind of walking toward the same direction. Um, and then this, instead of, I mean, some scholar view it as the sun symbol. So that means farming under the sun, all of them are, you know, toiling. I would imagine like people, like three of them have, um, I mean, three just means multiple. Um, and then the, there are different rows of plantation, not plantation, but rows of, um, you know, what, whatever they they farmed, right? And then each one have their own row. They will go at the same time together. Imagine multiple people going together. So that's the sense of, okay, under the sun, although the, all of them are working toward the same goal. So they are unified by the same mission, basically. That's the concept of crowd. And my interpretation of this is instead of this is a sun, because I mean, in cloudy days, they work out work on the field as well it doesn't really depend on the sun even if sun is more suffering for farming activity right um but here i view it as the eye symbol because this is simply the eyeball um symbol and so probably in the back then farming when some farmer uh, became more powerful, simple, kind of like a, the capital economy, right? So uh, there are multiple entrepreneurs started at the same time, and some of them just did it better, more efficiently, ha have a you know better um, running or management of the business, and eventually they win out, and then they start to um, manage more resources, more people, Right, and this kind of managing, I guess, in the in the agricultural society back then, is like a bigger farmers are going to hire. In I mean, probably it, it, back then, it's not exactly indentured slavery. I don't exactly know, but supposedly these are free men, right? Um, and they they still uh, have to be, um, I mean, hired by this bigger farmer or land owner, and then this eyeball. Is simply supervision of them working as effectively or as correctly as possible to make farming back then effective. So that's the concept of zhong. Shuo, okay, sure we have this um, speaking symbol that came from the structure of the mouth. And then this is the tip of the tongue. That's my interpretation. And then this um, kind of arrow pointing is like, okay, that tongue pointing inside uh, in that mouth. And then, so the tongue and the mouth are the two main organs that produce the sound bites, right? And this is a result. This are super simplified. It's just two sound bites depicted. So the whole thing represents speaking, right? Human, mouth, tongue produced sound bites. That's the basic definition or description um, of speaking. So the right side is a human figure, so this is a human figure, and then this is a mouse. Okay, so again, language creators disproportionately 
emphasize the mouth on human body, right? So the speaking was emphasized. And, um, and then we have this sign, almost like, whoa, <laughs> if you do, do math, that, that looks like, a, what's the word for that? Uh, properly? Is it called properly? Gosh, my, my English is <laughs> it's not that expressive today. So uh, the curve signs, right? So anyways, in Chinese, ancient language painters wouldn't know, you know, that the math that, that was um, invented back, back like centuries later um, as a math symbol, but that similar uh, shape of uh, concave shapes means um, a depiction of the air flow. So if the air flow from your mouth, right, going this way, is kind of, it's not caged in, it's spreading out. So that's good, like a positive energy and a well-received energy. So that's kind of speaking. So on the left side is about speaking. On the right side is actually about speaking as well. And that kind of, you know, human figure talking with the air flowing out, um, almost like you can regard it as uh, speaking with, with your, at least your sound, the sound from your mouth make spread out. So this is this is the spreading out, the, the broadcasting, so to speak. So it's like you, you get heard definitely uh, simply on the on the sender or the speaker side. It didn't say like the receiver, the, the listener, how much they take that in, but at least as the sound goes out. Okay. And fen yun. You can see in contemporary Chinese, both left side of the symbol, that means uh, fabric, which came from this one, um, share the same symbol versus the ancient one actually came from a different uh, origin. But I guess in the simplification of Chinese process or even earlier than that, some language um, standardizers, <laughs> they view it, okay, why not put it the same uh, to um, reduce the confusion from people because they combined these two characters together to form a unit of meaning and a shared symbol can mean, I mean, they, they, they are talking about the similar thing uh, or a category. So on the left, these symbols means textile that like simply come from this drapey image and the knots are the uh, kind of like a thread knot together combined. So that probably is the ancient way to store uh, textile. And so the textile, the right side is uh, the separation. So we have this knife, imagine the chopping board knife uh, with, a, with a handle with two, with two sides, but one side is the edge, right? It's the sharp end. So that's our knife symbol, um, the tool to separate things. And this is the result of separation. So this is separation, right? So we have this separation and we have fabric. And according to scholar, <laughs> this is a device um, used not exactly device, because when we talk about device in English, most likely it, it's electronic device in our contemporary life, right? It's it's a it's a <laughs> it's a stuff. It's a thing that used on the horse tail to bind them together. So I don't know. Maybe in the past, horses as a major transportation vehicle, or as a wartime. I mean, warring partner um, play an important role. So the fashion of their tail, probably it's something, or maybe there could be a functional thing. Like they need to kind of contain a horse tail somehow. So this is the kind of like a wrapping around the horse tail or somewhat to make the horse tail more orderly. I have no clue what they did to the horse tail, but. Okay, this is the stuff about horsetail. Eventually, in this context, especially we're talking about the talking, right? Uh, so this fen, zhong, zhong shuo fen yun, this fen actually means dispute, means 
Okay, the thread of conversation, you can regard it, the textile symbol as the thread of conversation split out. At least there are opposing opinions there. Like it, it's not in agreement. It's different opinions out there. Okay, and Yun. Okay, even if it came from different origin, um, eventually it kind of uh, formulated as similar about this thread. So thread of conversation, we can say that. And then the right side is the sound maker, just like this right side is sound maker, but it made the meaning, it used the meaning from the sound. This sound maker slash meaning maker is the uh, symbol for cloud. I mean, imagine how the ancient language creator visioned that as a cloud. Okay. Um, my reading of the symbol is okay the top line is the sky or the limit of your vision right okay and then the bottom are something floating not that far away from sky right and then this horizontal line have something irregular shape dropping down chinese for the most part like even if they're circular structures kind of round the curvy circular it's not that often this kind of totally non-linear like, like this shape or this shape we can see there's a way like probably mathematically you can express it easily with a formula right but this shape is more irregular like hard to represent right and this e um irregularity is what this shape try to um, capture so the cloud in the sky is hard to you can hardly characterize characterize ugh, the shape of the clouds in the sky right can you you can you can imagine or compare it to a, like a familiar object in our human life but most of the time it's hard to tell what shape right and a lot of times the, the puffs of the the, the cloud shape is it's irregular surface like it's it's hard to formulate to 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 form an easy shape to it so this is the language uh creator's way to put this irregular shape almost looking like a hook right um over there to show something very irregular and it's close to the sky da, that's the cloud so the left side Let's go back to origin. The left side, I got confused, but I'm going to tell you the sorted out version of, of this. So the circular doesn't mean mouth, okay? Because mouse in ancient time have this corner and the, the top line is, is flat. And then with this form, that's our mouth symbol. When we have an oval shape like that, according to scholar, this means the vision, um, view of the ancient uh, bronze container which is this structure um we view it from the top so you see the container imagine a barrel but it's in a metal and outside is kind of highly decorated right and most likely it's used for certain function most likely like providing some offering to the god so it was a big deal back then so that container, if you view it from the top, this is most, most likely what you're going to see. So that's the shape. That's a direct depiction of the shape, that the opening of that container that they, you're going to see. So the whole symbol was used as the counting of that container. And eventually that counting, uh, that unit of measurement, <laughs> we talked about Chinese like to use that a lot. Uh, was used to refer not only the container, the objects, um, pretty probably prized heirloom objects, um, but also valued objects for Chinese that used to count as humans as well. Like humans are valued just like that. I hope so. I mean, that's my interpretation. So this Yuan, the whole thing pronounced as Yuan, was also used as the unit of measurement of human. Before we talked about the mouse symbol, 
right? This mouse symbol as the unit of measurement of human. So this is another way to count human. And from just the structure of this, it's more valued. It's a, you know, divine offering um, equipment back then, um, pretty heavy, pretty pricey probably. And that was counted as a unit of that. And a human was counted as a unit of that. So that's kind of valued, prized like that. Um, so the, the whole thing in contemporary science, sense means about talking, speaking. I mean, this is a human figure involved uh, because that's the head count of humans. So human and then the cloud. Um, I mean, the disorderly obviously, obviously come, come from this cloud symbol because it's irregular. So when we have fen yun put together, that means Okay, first, you don't have the same opinion. There are different opinions there. And then it's the disorderly. There are no like a hierarchy or somebody come, came in, like supersede all of these voices and form them into a cohesive um, interpretation about something, right? So they're, they're talking about something, but everybody talking from their own angles. There is no unity in there. So it's disorderly. It's a, a mess, just like the cloud. So when we have that fen yun together, we pair it with zhong shuo. So it's the, the dispute came from the crowd, like multiple people in there. And shuo is everybody, you know, broadcasting, <laughs> getting themselves heard, different voices coming out there. So it's a kind of a market of voices, of market of series of thoughts. And they are not in agreement and they are disorderly. Okay, so... I cannot find a simple English concept for that. I just call it a fragmented. That came from this fen yun concept of there's no unity, there's no order kind of represented by this picture. And it's about people's voices. Like you cannot silence anyone yet because there was no conclusion or a unifying theory to cover all of them. And that's the state, uh, the state of you know the understanding of things. Um, everybody are you know on this marketplace of thoughts are you know broadcasting their own theories, and that's zhong shuo fen yun. And Ch contemporary Chinese often use this zhong shuo fen yun as almost like a synonym for gossip, like when the truth is not known, gossip or imaginations or you know theories uh, came up, uh, bubbling up, like people are starting to make up all kinds of stories to try to make sense of what happened when nobody knows the truth. So that's a kind of a okay, cash into the currency of thinking by one word a day with Sophie, see you another day.